And my biggest worry is that I buy a piece of property, I spend hundreds of thousands into this, maybe millions if I'm building new construction, and then I get to my inspections and they say, oh no, you can't do that. Or even worse, I get all the way to the end and I ask for my, my certificate of occupancy and they say, no, this is not what you told us you were gonna be doing, this, this is not matching up. Welcome back to Assisted Living Investing with me, Brett Schottkavis, where I guide you through how to set yourself up for financial freedom through the vehicle of assisted living. So I've done this, I have created financial freedom and wealth for myself through this niche. My wife and I currently own and operate and we are growing our businesses. So I wanna share firsthand how you can go through this because there is a lot of misinformation in this space and we'll talk about some of these things today, how people share that they can just take a house and make any normal house into an assisted living. So right now we are going through a series on first steps. What do I need to do first if I'm gonna open my first assisted living? And we're going through our deal killers here. We are talking to the city, we're doing our market research. We are finding out what could potentially block us. What is a deal killer from me achieving my dream by purchasing a house, by purchasing property, and making that into my assisted living. So last time we talked about talking to the city. We talked about, let's go meet with the planning department. Let's get over the biggest deal killer of them all, which is the zoning requirements, right? We figured out how to work the system, use their GIS map, talk to them about what we are allowed to do. So we are making offers on the right properties and we are not losing money by buying the wrong piece of property or the wrong house. So what's next after that? We need to talk to the next department at the city, which is the building department. And usually they are completely separate, two different divisions. You got planning and zoning on one side, you have building and permits on the other side. So now we're gonna go see what do we need to ask when we are doing due diligence. This is before we have even made offers on properties. We're going through a whole checklist of things to learn so that we don't make mistakes. I don't want you to buy the wrong property. I've already lost tens of thousands of dollars making offers on pieces of real estate and going through this due diligence and finding out, nope, there's a deal killer in there. Nope, I can't do this. So here's the questions that I ask. Every time I go and I get move into a new market where I'm gonna go make offers on a piece of property, I like to go in in person and I wanna meet with the person at the front desk and ask these kind of starting questions and then I'll, we'll go through a series of what I wanna get into. But the first thing I wanna find out is after I tell them what I want to do, what I am building, whether it is new construction on vacant land, or whether it is I'm purchasing a house, I'm doing a remodel, I'm purchasing a house, I'm doing a remodel, and in addition, I wanna explain what I'm doing and what my product is, right? I build these memory care mansions, end of life care for seniors. They do have dementia, right? So they get to a point where they're bedridden at the end of life. Now you may have a lighter level of care, but describe what that looks like. And then follow up from there, how do you classify me? What will you consider my building? What is my occupancy type? Am I falling under residential? Am I falling under institutional, right? Am I business use? Am I residential use? How do you classify me? Because there's gonna be certain permits for certain types of occupancy, for certain types of zoning, right? So how do you classify me? What box are you gonna put me in? because based on that information, I can go down a series of events and now find out what type of permits I will need, right? But if you are considering me I2 versus R4, there may be different things. Whether you consider me residential, like single family, I can do that, or whether you consider me business use, there may be totally separate permits. And I can ask all these questions, but if I haven't explained properly what I am, what my business is, you may give me a, uh, the wrong answer. I may pull permits and do the wrong thing. And my biggest worry is that I buy a piece of property, I spend hundreds of thousands into this, maybe millions if I'm building new construction, and then I get to my inspections and they say, oh no, you can't do that. Or even worse, I get all the way to the end and I ask for my, my certificate of occupancy and they say, no, this is not what you told us you were gonna be doing, this, this is not matching up we need to go back to the drawing board, right? I don't want you to spend months or hundreds of thousands on something that you're gonna get blocked on, right? There is 
fantastic opportunity in this space. There are baby boomers. There is tons and tons of people who need care, right? We now are talking about AI taking over medicine and people living 20, 30, 40 years longer. They're not really living longer. They're just taking that much longer to die. They need more care. They need more memory care mansions out there. How do we do this niche? Because it is phenomenal for my family and I want you to have the same experience. So after we've classified ourselves, we've gotten clarity. How are you classifying me, right? What box are you putting me into? Now let's find out what type of permits will I need, okay? If I am buying an existing building, an existing home and renovating it, what kind of list of permits? I, I really want them to just kind of list them out. What, what do I need, right? Do I, is, there, is there demo permit? Is there framing, electrical, plumbing? Is there a new panel permit, right? Sheetrock, finish out. What are all these different things? Now, is it one like renovation permit or are there multiple permits that I have to pull, right? When I go on the, the website, am I doing this in person or am I going on some type of online system? Because I want to check that out. I want to learn all of these things on the front side. I need to know all the permits that I need. Now, if I am doing this and pulling these permits, do I need plans? Like, do I need full sets of plans? Obviously I do if I'm building new construction, but if I'm doing a remodel, I'm taking an existing home, and even if I'm not even changing too much of it, do I need full plans? If I'm moving walls, if I'm making bedrooms bigger, if I'm adding bathrooms, do I need a full plan set? Do I need architectural drawings? Do I need a structural engineer to come in and say, yes, you can take this wall down. No, you can't. Here's what your, your um, you know, double two by eights are. Here's where your LVLs are. Do I need all that information on this plan set? Because that can be quite difficult if you're renovating an existing house, right? Because there's sheetrock everywhere. You can't tell what is there until you've demoed it. And maybe they want you to pull a demo permit before you can even do that, right? So I want to know these things on the front side. How can I go about this and what do I need to do? Now, if I'm building new construction, I know I'm gonna need a full plan set, but what items will I need? What type of engineering will I need? What type of architectural plans will I need? Do I need a full mock-up? Do I need MEP um, plans as well? I wanna know all of these things on the front side because some of these engineers can be quite expensive. So I need to budget those things in. Now, the next question I wanna ask is what code are they currently using? Like, is it 2022, is it 2018, or is it IBC, is it Texas Building Code? What code are you going to be looking up when I'm going through this, right? I wanna know what code that is. One, because my architect and my engineer need to know this. Two, because some of these things I wanna look up for myself. So there's a lot of things you need to learn, what your building department, what your city will require. And we haven't even gotten into the fire marshal part of this yet. The other part we have not gotten into is what does your state regulations require? right? Because your state is going to come in after you have your certificate of occupancy and they're going to inspect your building as a licensed assisted living. What are the actual building codes that the state requires? Because you're going to have to combine both of these things, what the city wants and what the state wants, because your state may have minimum sizes on certain things like minimum sizes on your bedrooms. For me here in Texas, it's a minimum of a 10 by 10 area. Right? There's going to be minimum square footages on uh, dining rooms, on living rooms. What about toilet counts or shower counts? Is, is there a ratio that says you have to have this many toilets per this many residents or showers? Or how wide are your hallways? Right? How is your, your egress? How are your, your ADA things? There's so many different things you have to consider. And you have to consider multiple different entities as you're going and pulling these permits. Right? There's the city. There's the fire marshal. There's the state. There's ADA. All of these things need to be considered and go into your one set of building plans. So there's kind of a lot to figure out here and you have to do a lot of research on the front side. But for the sake of this initial conversation, we're just gathering information to find out if there's any deal killers. After you have purchased the property or as you're going through due diligence, you can talk to builders, you can talk to experts on these areas and get all of these other things figured out. But I wanna mention them for you now so you know Here's everything you have to put in place. It's not so easy that I'm just gonna buy a four bedroom house, convert the garage and say, voila, now I have a six bedroom assisted living. It's usually not that simple. The next thing I wanna ask is about utilities. What kind of utilities does the city have and can I connect to them? What about the water line? Can I connect to the city's water? If you're building new construction, you may need to. 
if you have an existing home, you probably already have a water line, but is that a half inch, three quarter, one inch? If you have to bring in fire sprinklers, do you need to add a second meter? Do you need to, to tap to the city's line? And is that line big enough? Do you need a six inch or an eight inch line if you have to have a full 13 fire suppression system? What about your sewer line? Is there a sewer line that you can connect to? What are the permits? What is the fees? What are the engineering that has to happen if you need to connect to the city's sewer line? And if there is no sewer, do you have to use septic? Is it even possible for you to use septic? If you had to put a system in, do you have the actual land to fit it for the tanks and the drip system? Is it a residential septic tank or is it a commercial system? We have a commercial system and it's massive and I need almost an acre to fit that thing in. What about your city electric? Is there actually enough power on the lines and from the transformer? I've had to upgrade the transformers on my areas before. We have 20 air conditioning units in our mansions and it takes a ton of power. And I had to find out, is there actually enough power there? So it may take two or three different trips or email series to get all this information put together. But on my first trip to the building department, I want to find out, are there any potential deal killers? Anything that'll block me from doing this? So I'm going to ask these questions first, and then I'll dig into it with all these little details that I mentioned. But that's not even talking about the fire marshal. The fire marshal is one of the biggest deal killers of them all. They can ask for a ton of things that may not even be possible on your building or on the size of the land that you have. So next episode, we're gonna talk about how to talk to the fire marshal, what questions should we ask, and what are the potential deal killers that may block us on this thing. So join me on the next episode. We talk about talking to your fire marshal, making sure you're buying the right property. And if you need extra help with this, I do a free foundations training, 15 lessons going through this, documenting everything that we need to, talking in depth about the city, the fire marshal, the building department, the planning department, the zoning, and raising money and so much more. If you want extra help, reach out to us. There's a link below for free training, so click on that link, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all on the next round.